Hello everybody, welcome to People's Soft Channel. My name is Siva Khoya and today we will go behind the scenes and step into the shoes of People's Soft Administrator and perform common admin tasks like starting and stopping web server, app server and process scheduler server. While we are at it, I am also going to show you how to clear cache on all these three servers. That's my plan for today guys. Without any delay, let's get started. Welcome back guys. Let's jump straight into hands-on exercise. This is what I'm going to do on each server. First, I'll bring down the server, delete the cache and then restart the server. Alright, let's start with web server. If you take a look at this PeopleSoft architecture diagram, it is web server that makes PeopleSoft application accessible at a click of a button through web browser. Each and every action performed by end user inside PeopleSoft application will be communicated to app server and database server through web server. Oracle recommends to have web server installed on a machine having as much as memory as possible so that it can store hundreds of HTML pages. Web server caches frequently used images style sheets and javascript files. Enough of talking, let me go ahead and show you how to bring down web server. PeopleSoft provided a utility called psadmin to bounce servers. When we use this utility, the experience is same both in Windows and Linux environment. Even though I will do my demo in Linux environment, I will also show you how to access psadmin utility when PeopleSoft is installed on Windows. I installed my PeopleSoft application on a virtual box. All the three servers, web, app and process scheduler are installed on the same virtual box. Virtual box is installed on a Linux machine. That's why user interface looks like this. Let me show you how to access PS admin utility. I'll go ahead and log in as a root user. In order to access PS admin utility, I have to switch my user from root to PS ADM2. After switching user, all I need to do is type the command PS admin to access PS admin utility. If PeopleSoft is installed on a Windows 10 machine, navigate to the folder where you installed your PeopleSoft application. Click on PT folder. Then click on PS home folder, click on app server folder and here you can see the PS admin utility. Right click and select run as administrator. Then you can see PS admin utility just like in our Linux environment. Back to my Linux environment. In order to bounce servers, all I need to do is start punching numbers based on the options available here. Let's input the number 3 to select web server. Then I will click enter. Then I will input the number 1 to administer our domain. Then I will select our domain by selecting 1 and clicking enter. I will go ahead and input number 2 to shut down our web server. It will ask me are you sure to shut down. I will say yes. And as you can see it is currently shutting down our web server. After a few seconds, as you can see here, my web server is now down. Before I clear web server cache, I want to show you configuration options related to cache on a web server. By the way, I have done this before I brought down my web server. In order to show you that, I will navigate to people tools, web profile. Usually I start by clicking web profile history to figure out which web server my current PeopleSoft environment is using. I will click on the search button. As you can see this web profile is loaded today. So I can assume that this is the web profile my current PeopleSoft environment is using. So I will copy this web profile name. Now I will navigate to web profile configuration. I will paste my web profile and then I will navigate to caching tab and this is where configuration related to web server cache is located. As I discussed earlier web server caches frequently used images, style sheets 
and JavaScript. I just want to bring this configuration to your awareness. And this is the folder where all cache will be stored. I know this is the relative path. I will now show the actual path and we are going to delete web server cache. In order to delete my web server cache, I will navigate to PIA home shown here. To this path, I will navigate. For better user experience, I will navigate to this path using WinSCP. Here is my WinSCP. I already logged in and navigated to our PIA home shown here. Then I will click on web server folder, PeopleSoft, Applications, again on PeopleSoft, Portalware, PS and Cache. Remember when we saw web server configuration, by default all cache files are stored in cache folder and that folder is this. If I click on this folder, what I see is web server cache which includes images, style sheets and javascripts to name a few. Now I will go ahead and delete all these cache files by doing Ctrl A and Shift Delete. As you can see, I have cleared my web server cache. Let me go ahead and restart my web server. In order to do that, I navigated back to my command prompt and I selected one to boot my web server. After a few seconds, my web server is back up. Let's move to the second part of this episode, Bouncing Application Server. There will be several processes running on App Server mainly to fetch information requested by the end user which includes fields, pages, components and business logic. Since App Server is processor intensive, it should be installed on a machine having the fastest CPU possible. Coming to what gets cached on App Server? Frequently requested pages, components, business logic. Now let's do a hands-on exercise and bounce our application server. Before we bounce App Server, I just want to show you where App Server cache is located. The navigation is almost similar to Web Server cache. First we need to navigate to PS Home, then to App Server folder, then App Server domain and cache folder. And inside cache we have our current App Server cache files. Let me head back to my command prompt to bring down my App Server. Here I am on my PeopleSoft PIA domain administration. Let's head back to the main menu. I can navigate one step back by entering Q. Q means quit the current menu. I will use Q again to go one step back to the main menu. This time I will select the option number one since we plan to play with application server. I will click enter and I plan to administer this domain. I will click one and I have one app server domain so I will select that domain. In case of app server we can purge cache by entering number 8 without bringing down application server. I will go ahead and try that option now and I can enter any comments why you plan to delete the cache. I will say demo. If I want to archive my current cache I can do it. For this demo I will say no. Here comes the warning message informing us it will take some time to clear cache. I will say yes to it. After a few seconds, you can see the message cache files have been deleted and will be refreshed from the database. Pretty straightforward process, right? That's how to clear cache on App Server. If you want to confirm if cache files are updated, you can navigate back to our App Server cache location and you can see latest timestamp updated against all cache folders. If I want to bring down my app server, all I need to do is input number two to bring app server shutdown menu. After clicking enter, again I'll input number two to use force shutdown option, which is little faster. I'll click enter. As you can see, all the processes that are running on app server are shutting down. As you can see, there are 16 processes running on app server and all processes have been stopped. To restart my app server, all I need to do is input number one to boot my application server. I will select serial boot and click enter. 
After a few seconds, all my 16 processes are back online, which means my app server is up and running. Let's move on to last part of this episode, bouncing process scheduler server. Process scheduler server is also known as batch server. It is the location where many of our batch programs run, such as app engine programs, SQR, COBOLs, etc. Process scheduler can be installed as a standalone server. It can also exist on the same machine where app and database servers are installed. Process scheduler maintains its own copy of cache storing copy of batch programs that gets frequently executed on process scheduler server. If your batch program is running on an old code line, now you know what the problem might be. Now, let me quickly show you where process scheduler cache resides. After that, I will show you how to bring down process scheduler server, delete cache and restart process scheduler server. All right, let's get started. Just like other servers, first I have navigated to PeopleSoft configuration home location. In my case, process scheduler configuration is part of app server. So I will click on app server folder. We saw this application server domain before. I will click on PRCS and this is process scheduler domain. I will double click on it. And here you can see the cache folder and inside it you can see process scheduler cache. Before we can delete these cache files, first we need to bring down our process scheduler server. Let me head back to our PS admin utility. Let's go one step back by clicking Q. Again, one step back. This is our PS admin home. Now we plan to administer process scheduler. So I will input number two. I will click enter and I will select one to administer this domain. Then again, I will select our process scheduler domain. In order to bring down our process scheduler, I will input number two. I will click enter and I want to do force shutdown which is little faster. After a few seconds, all my process scheduler processes are stopped. Now I can head back to my WinSCP and delete all process scheduler cache. I will do control A, shift delete to delete all process scheduler cache. Now I will navigate back to my PS admin home and reboot my process scheduler. As you saw, I input number one to boot my process scheduler server. After a few seconds, my process scheduler is up and running. That's it for today guys. Don't forget to leave a comment if you like my content. See you next time.